So in this video, we will have a look at how do you build a custom Nginx Docker image using Docker file and not Docker commit command. So do you recall by default when you run the Nginx container, uh, it shows you a welcome to Nginx page. So this is the IP of my virtual machine which I'm using on DigitalOcean. As you can see, nothing is running here right now. Let me go ahead and quickly run a Nginx machine, a Nginx container. So I run it in detach mode with port forwarding on port 80. Nginx. So now when I reload, I have the welcome to Nginx uh, page over here, right? Now what if I don't want this welcome to Nginx page and instead I want something like this, which is uh, more of a custom index.html file instead of the default index.html with nginx uses by default. So what we will do is we will copy this index.html file in our image and then use that image to run a container. Let's do it. So I have this docker file which I already created just now. So what I'm doing here, now these keywords from add, run, cmd, these are called instructions in the world of Docker uh, when it comes to Docker files. So essentially Docker files allow you to put these instructions wherein you can say what do you want, what do you want a particular Docker daemon to do for you as a result of building this particular Docker image. So in this case, now every Docker file should have a base image, something that you are building from. If you don't want to use anything at all, you can use from scratch. Uh, we will come to it in a future video about what from scratch means. So in this case, I'm building from the default Nginx image and I'm using the latest version of Nginx for that. Yeah, I can give a custom Nginx uh, version also. Instead of using latest, I can pass on that version number here. And then I'm telling uh, Docker that, hey, while you are building from Nginx image, uh, why don't you go ahead and add a custom index.html file for me at this location, which is slash user slash share Nginx HTML, right? So it starts from here, slash user, and then goes on till slash share Nginx HTML. Now this is the location where nginx's index.html is served from by default. If you want to have a look at that, what we could do is, so I have this nginx running, I'll go into this container. So now let me go to cat slash user slash share nginx html index.html. So this is the default one, welcome to Nginx that we see right now uh, over here, right? So I'm saying instead of this welcome to Nginx, go ahead and add my custom index.html file, which I have added to my GitHub gist. So if I go to my GitHub page, And then I look into my gists, which are, okay, I could actually go directly to gist.github.com. So this is the index.html, which I just added half an hour ago. This is what I'm trying to add, and it should show my profiles as you see over here. So basically, this is how it should appear. Uh, don't worry about the HTML syntax that's out of the scope of this video. I'm just trying to show you how you can add a custom index.html like this. Now, because this index.html is accessible publicly on the internet, I could directly use the add command and then pass the URL of this index.html. How did I get the URL? I clicked the raw button over here on GitHub and I got this URL as you see in the URL bar. This is exactly what I have used over here. So once I have done that, then I need to give read permissions to this index.html so that Nginx is able to read this particular file. Again, this is more of a Linux thing. Uh, don't worry about it if you're not able to understand. The thing that I want you to take away from this is 
run instruction allows you to run a Linux command. So chmod plus r is a Linux command and it is a command that allows you to add read permissions to a particular file and basically update permissions to any file to whatever you want. In this case I am doing plus r which means read and I am running this command using run instruction which is a docker file instruction that you can use to run any Linux command on your image. right? So, so far what we did we picked up a base image. I said from this particular base image, I used add docker file instruction to add a particular file to a given location inside my container, which is slash user slash share slash nginx slash html. And then I gave the read permissions to the file I added in the above step by giving uh, by using the run docker file instruction. And once that is done, now I am just saying that use cmd instruction to run this command nginx hyphen g daemon off which is again a way in which nginx runs its processes inside a Linux container as the default command when, when any container is run that uses this particular image which is created using this particular docker file. All right? So just to uh, grasp what we did we picked up a base image, we added a custom file to the location which nginx uses to serve its index.html, we added read permissions to that custom file and then we set the default command which will be run the moment container starts using an image which was created from this particular docker file overall. Right? So now we have this docker file. Uh, in fact I will go ahead and I will add it. Uh, Actually, it's it's there. I also add it to my GitHub gist, and I'll add the link of both uh, this custom index.html and this Docker file which we are using for this particular demonstration. I'll add the links of this to my YouTube video description so that you can pick it up from there if you want. Right now, the next step we need to do is actually build an image using this particular Docker file. Now, how do you do that? To do that, you use a command called Docker build. I'll run it over here. Now docker build expects you to give a tag. So in this case I'll give it a tag. So you can do hyphen hyphen tag or you can use the short form hyphen t. I'll give it a tag my nginx image and the version I'll call say 1.0 for now. And then it needs the location where this docker file is present. Basically more like a context. So context is, is basically uh, the context under which a particular image needs to be built. So basically anything that is present in the directory which you are passing as context will be copied to the resultant docker image. So in this case the docker file is present in this particular directory itself and hence I'm going to pass dot which is the present working directory which reflects the current working directory as the context. So I'll do docker build hyphen t my nginx container with version 1.0 and build it using the current context which is dot. So then it says I'm sending build context to docker daemon which is 42.7 MB simply because I have these other files. What I could do is I could just remove this image again so once I have removed this image I can delete everything else except for docker file so I'll do rm this, this and this all right now if I see I only have docker file so now when I do docker build it only sends 10.75 KB because in my current directory I only have 10.75 KB. Um, in production setting you will notice that people keep docker file in a separate directory basically in a directory where they have only the things needed inside that particular docker image to go because um, if they keep it with rest of the code which they don't want to copy the entire code will still be copied or you will have to use this concept of docker ignore which is more like a git ignore which we will talk about in future. So let's come back to our topic for now. It is sending the build context. Um, 
if you didn't still understand what a build context is, I would say stay on, hang on to it. Eventually, you will get a grasp of it. It is giving step one as the base image which we are using, step two as the command to add the custom Nginx image to this location. So for that, it is first downloading the custom Nginx image and then putting it in the location slash user share. Then it is changing the permissions by using the run instruction and it is running it in the image. And then it is using the CMD instruction to say that this is the default command which will be run uh, when, when any image, when a, when a continuous is run using this particular image. So now we have the image with us. Let me do docker images. You can see I have my nginx container now, right? Now that I have my nginx container, I'll run this. So I'll say, basically I'll first stop anything that is running right now. So this container is running, I'll stop docker ps, uh, docker stop this particular container. And then I'll run the container using my nginx container, uh, my nginx image. So docker run in daemon mode, port 80 to 80, and then my nginx container. So 1.2, all right. So I had to pass the version number 1.0 because by default it looks for latest, but I gave the version number 1.0, the tag 1.0 to my image. So now this container is running. What this means is it should now give me a page like this but when I access it using the IP address of my uh, DigitalOcean machine, which is this doing, right? So now I have it over here. Now, I can still have uh, the old Nginx running, but I can do a different port for that. So I say I can do, I can actually not use, uh, I can just say P A D and then nginx so it gave me a default uh, it gave me a random port of 32768 so if i go to 32768 i have the old nginx running and if i go to port 80 i have my new nginx running which has a custom index.html so that's that's what a, a custom docker file basically means or a docker file basically means a docker file is nothing but a way for you to build your own images in your own custom way. There are lots of different docker instructions that you can build from, that you can use to customize your docker images, which we will go through step by step in several videos now. So for now, I'll stop this video here because it has been too long in length and we'll continue about more about this in the future videos. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more. Don't forget to subscribe because it encourages me to create more such content and stay tuned. Uh, let me know how I can improve my videos or reach out to me via YouTube comments or via my channel in general. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next video.